conviction against Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh, just as the stage is set for his first accuser to testify on Capitol Hill this week. Evening, everyone, and welcome to The Next Revolution. I'm Steve Hilton, and this is the home of positive populism. What a blockbuster night. We are live in New York. Candace Owens is here. Jason Chaffetz is here. Greg Jarrett is here. We will bring you all the information and analysis you need to be ready for a momentous week ahead. I've also got a special announcement about positive populism coming up soon, an exclusive offer you won't want to miss. Plus, later in the show, we'll bring you a special Swamp Watch on the Democrats' outrageous hypocrisy about Brett Kavanaugh. But first, the New Yorker dropping a bombshell report just within the past hour about a second woman accusing Brett Kavanaugh of sexual misconduct decades ago. This time, it's 53-year-old Deborah Ramirez who says Kavanaugh exposed himself to her and thrust himself towards her when both were students at Yale University in the mid-1980s. Now, both the White House and Kavanaugh have issued statements within the hour on this new allegation. Kavanaugh saying, quote, this alleged event from 35 years ago did not happen. The people who knew me then know this did not happen and have said so. This is a smear, plain and simple. He goes on to say he looks forward to testifying this week. And the White House also responding tonight saying, quote, this 35-year-old uncorroborated claim is the latest in a coordinated smear campaign by the Democrats designed to tear down a good man. The statement also says the claim is denied by all who are said to be present at this party involving this latest accuser and that the White House stands firmly behind Judge Kavanaugh. But that's not all. Michael Avenatti, remember him? Stormy Daniels' lawyer. He says he now has a client who has, quote, credible information regarding Judge Kavanaugh and his friend Mark Judge. Information Avenatti promises to make public tomorrow. All this as both Kavanaugh and his original accuser Christine Blasey Ford are set to testify this Thursday on Capitol Hill. In a moment we'll bring in Jason Chaffetz, Candace Owens and Greg Jarrett but first Fox News Capitol Hill senior producer Chad Pergram is live for us in Washington DC. Chad, um, just until a few minutes ago we thought we had quite a clear timetable set up with the hearing agreed to taking place on Thursday, the accuser Dr. Ford testifying, agreeing to that. How does this new um, allegation change the timetable? Well, the short answer is nobody quite knows. You can almost imagine a cornice, uh, you know, at a ski uh, resort, you know, about to start an avalanche come, you know, coming down the hill here. That could be a real problem for Brett Kavanaugh if senators on both sides of the aisle interpret these allegations, this other set of allegations, as credible, and they need to hear from other witnesses. You know, you know, we thought we had this hearing set up for Thursday, probably the biggest hearing on Capitol Hill in a generation. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, you have to go back to Anita Hill and Clarence Thomas in 19. But there's an old saying on Capitol Hill, nothing is agreed to until everything is agreed to. And if you start to have other Republican senators start to say, we have some other questions here, we're not quite sure, you cannot change con congressional physics. Either you have the votes or you don't. The vote drop down right now in the Senate is 51 Republicans to 49 Democrats. And if they lose anybody on the Republican side of the aisle, it starts to be game over. You could imagine a situation where this starts to get very sticky for Brett Kavanaugh, especially if Democratic senators, and for that matter, Republican senators, are going to raise these other questions about this latest set, set of allegations in the hearing on Thursday. Uh, I mean, that's the problem for Brett Kavanaugh here. You know, the optics are, are bad. And what is passed is prologue. I will go back to mid-July. Mm -hmm. There was a nominee that was just seconds away from a confirmation vote, Ryan Bounds for the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. And Mitch McConnell ripped his nomination, his confirmation vote off the floor. Tim Scott, the Republican senator from South Carolina, said he could not vote for this nominee because of some racist writings and views that he had which were controversial in college mm -hmm. and they pulled that nomination off the floor the administration withdrew the nomination and that was it for ryan bounds because they didn't have the votes if they don't have the votes you can't do anything so chad what about the um uh the, the this this question of the fbi investigation i'm interested in the timetable as it relates to the the last possible moment that this uh, vote could be held and still get Judge Kavanaugh confirmed before the midterm elections. How much time is there? 
Well, you have five weeks here, and there are some on the Republican side of the aisle who say this would be great. Let's string this out a few more weeks and get it closer to the midterms because we've energized our base. And it might be tough for those Democrats who are from red states, Heidi Heitkamp of North Dakota, Joe Manchin of West Virginia, Joe Donnelly of Indiana, uh, to, to either you know, put their money where their mouth is and vote for Brett Kavanaugh. But you could also see this backfiring on Republicans right now because you know the Democrats might be making these charges against Kavanaugh. And and they need to make a persuasive case with suburban female voters. And this could back term if this goes too close to the election. Now, let's just lay this out based on what we know right now. If you were to have a hearing on Thursday, the earliest you could have a committee vote, which is not essential, but they're going to do that, obviously, because mm -hmm. this is an important nomination, would be Friday. And then it would be up to Mitch McConnell whether he would want to start to run the procedural traps on this over the weekend or wait till next week. If he ran the procedural traps, a confirmation vote would come about mid. If he ran the, con the, the, the procedural traps over the weekend, the confirmation vote would come about next Wednesday. But they might want to, to take more time with this. Yeah. They might say, well, we had this confirmation hearing. We heard from uh, Christine Blasey Ford. We heard again from Kavanaugh. We have other questions. We just can't forge ahead with a committee vote on Friday. This could drag this out maybe a couple more weeks. And that's why I cite Ryan Bounds. Right. It looked like he was on the verge of confirmation and then they withdrew it. But you know, as you say, there, you know, people want uh, this to be, uh, you know, done quickly, but there is still a number of weeks until the midterms. Thank you, Chad, so much for, sure. uh, for all of that. Joining me now, Fox News contributor, former Utah Congressman Jason Chaffetz, author of The Deep State, How an Army of Bureaucrats Protected Barack Obama and is Working to Destroy the Trump Agenda. Turning Point USA Communications Director Candace Owens and Fox News legal analyst and author of the bestseller, The Russia Hoax, The Illicit Scheme to Clear Hillary Clinton and Frame Donald Trump, Greg Jarrett. All right, everyone. What do we make of this? Nobody knows the truth of what happened until the accuser and the accused have an opportunity to speak publicly about it. Uh, you know, the legal landscape is littered with uh, false accusations. The Duke lacrosse mm -hmm. case, uh, the UVA rape case. Uh, so we just don't know. I mean, she may well be telling the truth, the, but we, uh, who are you we don't know. About this, the, 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 I, Dr. Which, Ford. Dr. Ford, and now we have a new accuser. Well, uh, under advice and consent under the Constitution, it's whatever the Senate wants it to be. But every salacious story that's coming out after the, the hearing was closed, by the way, I mean, he's right. been out there since July. And now you have this new salacious thing, which I think is terribly unfair without any evidence. You read through the article and time and time again, it says, well, this could have maybe happened, maybe. Right. This is the Deborah Ramirez, the new one yeah. tonight. Candace? Look, I think this is absolutely infuri infuriating. I am thinking that this is despicable behavior and it's a typical leftist tactic to stall. Um, they are constantly trying to stop this administration from having any wins. And this is the natural trail that they follow. First, they create mass hysteria by saying that if this person is elected or if this person is selected or confirmed, they're going to dial back human rights. We saw that with the whole abortion thing. Mm -hmm. Then if that fails, they move to number two, which is racism. They somehow accuse the, uh, the candidate of being racist, which we saw with Cory Booker's absurd I am Spartacus moment, which in fact proved that he was not racist. And now we're at number three, which is the Me Too witch hunt, which has been going on for way too long. It go makes due process go away. And they assume that because rape and sexual assault is such a sensitive topic as it should be, mm -hmm. that they can just throw around baseless allegations. I do not believe either of these women. I believe this is just simply the left pulling out leftist tactics to stop this conservative. Well, this is, I just want to I mean, look, you, you, you called it a witch hunt and you said you, you don't believe them nope. and uh, others do. And I think what, what that shows actually is the interesting uh, fact here. It's something that behavioral scientists call confirmation bias. You know, depending on your own sure. prior yeah, point right. of view, you believe the evidence you want to believe. I just want to be fair about this, if, if I can. And you please weigh in with your opinions. But there's a couple of red flags on either side, um, even before tonight's uh, news that I just wanted to sort of point to one on each actually I'm interested it's a detail but I think it could be important one of the things we heard and let's just start with Dr. Ford's side one of the things we heard a lot last week was let's learn from the Anita Hill process let's not have uh, unqualified senators ask questions let's get professionals in who really understand these sorts of things and have them ask the questions and that wouldn't be the senators but then when you get to the legal team Dr. Ford herself, her lawyers, went for precisely the opposite. They're insisting that it's Republican senators. Now, that tells you something, doesn't it, about what this is all about? 
The FBI uh, perhaps will eventually get involved now that there are additional accusers that are coming out. But he's already gone through six FBI investigations. These things are very detailed. I mean, they talk to your kindergarten teacher and every neighbor you've ever had. They talk to all of your classmates and, you know, yeah. your friends and, and relatives and so forth. None of this has ever come up. In, in six different FBI investigations of Brett Kavanaugh over 25 years, all of a sudden, um, these people are now speaking out with their accusations, which they should be heard respectfully, they should be considered. But I find it curious and suspicious that he was nominated on July 9th. And here we are at the end of September, and all of a sudden these people are coming forward. But just in the tactics of it, funnily enough, I've been thinking, especially after what Chad Program said about the fact we actually got still a lot of time to get this done, if that's what your goal is, why not give them the FBI investigation? Just give it to them so they can't always hold that against you. But that's not the way the Congress works. I can tell you, I was the chairman of a committee, the Oversight Committee. We did plenty of, of investigations, but Congress did them, not the FBI. Um, that's just not how it works. They're there to do a background, learn everything they can, mm -hmm. interview everybody that they can. But the advice and the consent isn't from the executive branch. The advice and the consent is solely from the but United States the Senate. That, that it did happen that the, Bush admin, the, the, the first Bush administration did it in relation to Anita Hill. They did do an FBI check on that. And, and look, the White House could request the FBI do one more background check in light of these new accusations. I, Chad was brilliant in laying out the five There's week still time to do it. There is time to do it. it and take I away that argument. I don't the see Democrats. the rush, frankly. So, but Candace, let's go to the, the, the lawyers. It seems to me that they want the spectacle Absolutely. Of the, of, as they describe it, the whatever it is, and I, 10 white old men. And, and here's it, the thing. Rather than what the Republicans offered, which is a female attorney handling the, the questioning. But they rejected that. That tells you something about their motivation. Yes, and this is their motivation. From start to finish, this has been a giant spectacle. And we are seeing that. And I'm telling you, conservatives have to stand together and we have to vote in midterms because this is what is at stake. They are going to do this by any means necessary to stomp this confirmation. Think about what they've, what they've done already to his family, what his wife is going through, what his children are going mm -hmm. through, watching these smears come out. I do not believe this whatsoever. And I feel, I'm confident that the Me Too movement has now now become a political weapon and is a political weapon that belongs to the left because conservatives would never do this. Well, we are going to look at the politics of it, particularly the, the hypocrisy. I, one of the things that really got me this week was the hypocrisy of the Democrats. We've got really good stuff for you on that later in the show. But I mean, do you think at the end of all this that I mean, it's, it's not provable, is it? None of this is provable. In the there, end, is not, there is not a prosecutor in this country that would take these cases to court. It's not a criminal investigation. That's in part why the FBI is not involved. Right. But there is scant to no evidence. You want to respectfully hear from this person, and they've, Senator Grassley has been over backwards in adjusting the, the rules of the Senate to accommodate her. Private. Do we do it in public? Mm -hmm. Do we do it in California? Do we do it in Washington, D.C.? But you don't come into the negotiation into the United States Senate and start to say, well, this is who can ask questions and who can't. That's not the way it works. Right. You know, as, as a lawyer, I'm fairly familiar with statutes of limitations. In Maryland, actually, there is none on sexual assault. However, from a practical standpoint, a case that's 35, 36 years old, um, it's in which the accuser doesn't remember all the people who were there, how she got there, how she got home, uh, where it happened, the house it occurred. Um, and she's not even sure of the time period, yeah. frankly. So that is an unprovable case. And I agree with Jason. No prosecutor in their right mind would ever take that case. What, and go on, and I'm just going to add this. And all of these women, they all demand a full FBI investigation after slipping out of amnesia of 35 plus years. Right. What are the chances that on top of all of that, they decide to come out with their story to The Washington Post and The New Yorker publications that have basically been in cahoots trying to stop this administration at every chance that they could get? All of this reeks to me. It absolutely reeks. Well, I, I believe that this is. Yeah. completely dishonest. The, I mean, the argument that's made, just to, just to sort of put that side of it, is that is that 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 that, it, that some, something about the trauma means that you don't want to talk about it at the time. There's lots of evidence psychologically that that, that, that could explain oh, the no, delay. But when you want to come out, you go okay, to Washington Post. Okay, but what's interesting, Post? I think, is that, that is that yeah. now you have the. Um, what I think is interesting about the f this news tonight, and then we have another one tomorrow, apparently, from right. th thanks to good old Michael Avenatti, is that um, what 
one of the arguments prior to that was this is so out of character mm -hmm. for Brett Kavanaugh. How can you believe? Look at his whole life, unblemished and so on. It seems like that's what they're trying to chip away at with well, these stories. But in the Ford situation, the so-called witnesses were there have all now issued letters to the Senate committee saying they, do, they, they don't have any recollection of it. So the so-called witnesses, there are none except for the accuser herself. Yeah. Again, the Senate's going to have to go through this, but... She doesn't remember the year, doesn't remember the place, doesn't well, it, remember, can't, I know, doesn't, I mean, well, that's can't tell you who good. was there. But it is interesting, isn't it? I, th I thought that in the statements from the White House, particularly the White House, a very strong statement tonight, and mm -hmm. used that word smear, I thought that shows that there's a real, it feels like there's an anger there about what's going on. Because they've lived it. They've yeah. lived it. This is exactly what happened during Trump's election campaign. Well, the and it's important in this case, the latest revelation, like the Dr. Ford case, there's nobody to corroborate it. Um, which is always something that jurors consider. Now, this is a political exercise, I realize, before the Senate right. Judiciary Committee. But we do borrow some principles uh, from the law. And one of them that's a foundation of American democracy is presumption of innocence. But when you listen to people like Senator uh, Kirsten uh, Gillibrand of New York, who stood in front of cameras and pronounced that yes. the accuser was telling the truth and she believed her without ever talking to the accuser. Gillibrand's never <laughs> even met her. We Gillibrand will... must have slept through UCLA's law school class on presumption of innocence. She's really an embarrassment to the legal profession. We will we will be seeing more of uh, Senator Gillibrand later on. I'm just going to leave that with you. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, thanks. We're going to keep on this. Uh, so stay there. Still to come, our special Swamp Watch on the Democrats' Kavanaugh hypocrisy. Plus, more on the deep state plot to oust Donald Trump. And listen to this right now. If you go to positivepopulism.org, you will find an exclusive offer. My new book, Positive Populism, explains how the elitists have destroyed economic security, family and community in America, and how we can turn things around and put working Americans first. You can get a special signed copy if you go to that website, positivepopulism.org, tonight. Okay, more ahead on this breaking story on Brett Kavanaugh. Don't go away. Welcome back, everyone. More on the breaking news we've been following tonight. A new allegation of sexual misconduct against Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. We're back with Jason Chaffetz, Candace Owens and Greg Jarrett. Let's talk about the, um, the, the kind of raw politics of this in terms of the vote. You've now got two women and according to... Uh, Stormy Daniels lawyer Michael Avenatti hasn't specified that it's another woman I think but tomorrow apparently he's bringing someone else out um, Susan Collins on Friday put out a very critical a tweet very critical of President Trump and what he said how's the vote looking I mean up till now it was seen as pretty solid for Brett Kavanaugh. Well, there are 11 Republicans and 10 Democrats. All 10 Democrats have already on said on the committee right. have all said no matter what, even they're all going to vote no. It's not going to sway one single vote. On the Republican side, the one that's really in play is Jeff Flake. And Jeff has wanted to uh, hear this person out. And I think that kind of spread and a number of people have said, mm -hmm. yes, let's do it. Mitch McConnell, interesting enough, has actually been the one that says, no, let's plow through this. Let's yeah. have the vote right now. But what about that? the overall Senate vote? you know, in the end of the, the actual confirmation. I vote. think so much depends on Lisa Murkowski, Susan Collins and Jeff Flake, uh, all of whom are Republicans, but all have uh, reservations. They're reticent about voting. Flake's leaving. Perfect name for him, by the way. Um, and, and then you have to look at, you know, other Democrats who are in uh, red states uh, up for reelection. Uh, people like Joe Manchin, you know, the, Trump won overwhelmingly in West Virginia. So you have to look at those people as well. So you could lose, say, a Susan Collins and gain a Joe Manchin. Even uh, with this, I mean, I, I mean, I know you're very suspicious about the way this is all coming out. I'm, I'm incredibly suspicious. I think the Republicans need to to break through this barrier because it's going to continue to happen, and they sh they should have a strong show of support for Brett Kavanaugh and get him com get him confirmed. I am optimistic that throughout all of this, he will be confirmed. And here's what's going to backfire: he's mm -hmm. going to be right of Clarence Thomas when he does, because he has seen leftism and what the Democrats are, Democrats are capable right. of up close and personal. What about? Can you see Susan Collins kind of? And to use Mitch McConnell's well, plowing through 
this latest this Avenatti Yahoo, if he comes out with somebody, the credibility will continue to dive. I mean, is oh, it just a coincidence? Is it yeah. just a coincidence <clears throat> that these all happen to be Democrats? Storm that Storm the Storm attorney Storm. for Ms. Ford, that the attorney for Ms. Ford just happens to be a mouthpiece of the resistance movement? Do we really think that's all just a coincidence here? The uh, Democrats probably want to keep their distance from the creepy porn lawyer. Uh, I knew someone was going to say it. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> because, I mean, that guy is so toxic, uh, just generally speaking, um, merely looking at him. I think Tucker has probably copyrighted that phrase, but I'm sure he'd be fine with I'll you. I'll be paying you some exactly. money over that. Are you that. suggesting the Democrats have standards? He's the, the okay. one guy they don't want to be aligned so, with. So, Craig, listen, I, just, I, I'm, I know there's so much going on, but I'm dying to ask you because you're such an expert in all this on the other massive news over the weekend, which is this Rod Rosenstein right. story. Um, what do you make of that? Well, this just underscores uh, the arguments in my book that th there were people at the FBI and Department of Justice who sought to sabotage the president based on false claims in order to drive him from the presidency. And this is more evidence of it. Rod Rosenstein was involved. Uh, initially, it was the FBI, but Rosenstein later signed on to the renewal of the FISA warrant without proper evidence. And ever since then, he has been suppressing the incriminating mm -hmm. evidence of his wrongful conduct by withholding documents lawfully sought by Congress. Rosenstein needs to go. He should be uh, forced to step aside right. while there is an investigation into whether he was trying to solicit people to uh, undertake the 25th Amendment and wiretap the president. So that needs to be investigated. He should not be at the helm of the special so counsel do you think investigation. Just quickly, he should go. Um, I mean, I agree. But should he go? Because I, I was interested in people saying, well, there's a, a split within Fox. So some, you know, Sean Hannity saying, calm down, don't. Saying to the president, don't fire him now. Demote That's him. a setup. Take him off the Others case. saying he should go now. What, what do you think? The case has been tainted and corrupted, not just by Rod Rosenstein, but Andrew Weissman struck. But should should Rosenstein be fired now or, or wait? Let's, uh, let's have him step aside replaced with somebody who can be fair and neutral and objective. Okay. And in the meantime, he should appear before Congress and the inspector general under oath and answer questions. You need this meeting that happened a couple months into the Trump presidency. There are six or seven people involved in that meeting. We need to know everybody's name that's in there so that Congress can do a transcribed interview with each of those very people. Very good plan. And I totally agree that Rod Rosenstein should recuse himself. They're investigating what happened with the FISA abuse. He signed his name on the FISA abuse. So how can he oversee that investigation? This, this Rosenstein, you know, I'm going to wear a wire and take the president. I mean, he says it's a joke. To me, I, mean, I read every word of it. It reads completely true. Yeah, it's it Definitely is not a joke, but um, look, we're not surprised. We know this is going on. They are trying to uh, harm and assault this president from the inside out. Yes. And as, I don't, I personally don't think that he should take um, too strong of a stance here, only because look what's happening on the outside. People's eyes are, are being awoken. It's and revealing starting, yes, what it's we revealing all said. what we've all said that from the very beginning. So in many ways, it helps him more than it hurts him in the end. Excellent point. And it's a lovely setup to what we're going to be talking about next. What can we do to beat the deep state? Answers after the break. Don't go away. Breaking right now, Senator Dianne Feinstein calling on Senator Chuck Grassley to immediately postpone any proceedings related to Brett Kavanaugh. This after a new allegation of sexual misconduct against him tonight. We're following these developments throughout the hour and bring you any updates as they happen. Okay, in the last couple of weeks, in the Bob Woodward book, in that anonymous New York Times op-ed, and now with this outrageous behavior by Rod Rosenstein that we were just talking about, we've had clear confirmation of what we've been saying all along, that a shadowy group of unelected bureaucrats, the deep state, is actively plotting to overturn the 2016 election, sabotage President Trump's populist agenda, and remove him from office. With impeccable timing, our guest, Jason Chaffetz, has a new book out, The Deep State, how an army of bureaucrats protected Barack Obama and is working to destroy the Trump agenda. His book talks about government agencies being weaponized in the service of political battles. Go on then, Jason. 
Uh, it really is amazing. There is a concerted brazen event uh, that these people are getting together to take down the Donald Trump agenda. Uh, they don't do so with, you know, tinfoil hats in secret off in some corner. They actually go out, they release classified information. Mm -hmm. They do these anonymous op-eds and, and share information that shouldn't be out there. Uh, they simply just ignore what the president will say and not do it. I mean, you just had President Trump say, let's go ahead and release these yeah. FISA documents and these uh, text messages unredacted but of course none of that happened and because the deep state will push back they don't want anything to happen so in the book i detail everything from the epa and the department of interior to the department of justice the state department and others homeland security they will do anything so that they don't have accountability and they can just do what they see fit they don't want to be held accountable that's right i mean honestly what i actually like about the Woodward book and the anonymous op-ed and, and now this business with R Rosenstein is that it kind of confirms what we've been saying. I mean, our friend uh, Dana Perino, she kind of slightly teases us about the deep state. You know, she kind of jokes that we're right. uh, overdoing it. But honestly, it, it's it, almost daily we're seeing evidence that it's there and they really are trying to undermine the president. Look, it doesn't matter what you want to call, if you want to call it the deep state, if you want to call it a shadow government, we are seeing the implications here. There's been a major paradigm yeah. shift and they are uncomfortable with it. They weren't expecting it. They picked their candidate. They wanted Hillary yes. Clinton to win and she did not win. So whatever backdoor deals were done, you know, guaranteeing that she was going to win, they are now off the table and this makes them tremendously uncomfortable. There's an earthquake in D.C. and people that have had power for a very long time are not going to let go of it easily. Yes, that's the crucial point. They hate the threat to their power. What what do you think we can do about it? Well, you're just a pile on there. They don't want a disruptive uh, personality like Donald Trump who's going to hold them accountable. Yes. And so in part, Congress has to stand up for itself. You know, if you're investigating the Department of Justice as Devin Nunes and the House Judiciary and, and the Oversight Committee have been doing, they have to go to the Department of mm -hmm. Justice to to uh, get a subpoena uh, fully enforced. That is fundamentally wrong. I, As chairman of the Oversight Committee, I could issue a subpoena then they had to turn over to the Department of Justice and they'd look at it and say, no, I don't think we're going to do that. Wow. That's not a co-equal branch of government. The Congress has to stand up for itself. So, I mean, but are there any specific reforms that you would absolutely advocate? This, this whole concept of inherent uh, contempt, the ability to, if you actually hold somebody in contempt, to actually be able to enforce that. For the very first time in the history of the United States, we held Eric, we held Eric Holder in contempt of Congress. And a couple weeks later, he's back testifying yeah, at, yeah. on Capitol Hill as if nothing happened. you got to starve the beast. you got to be able to fire federal yes, employees. I agree with if that. They don't pay Very their much. taxes you got to be able to fire them we don't collect it. about a billion dollars in taxes each year from federal employees they get paid by the federal taxpayers they don't pay their taxes and they keep working at the federal government. I think we should do some kind of double. I so agree with that, this deep state stuff. My plan was to unmask the deep state and then fire them, and then we know what we're doing. All right, <laughs> out of time on that one. Up next, Swamp Watch takes on the left's hypocrisy over Judge Kavanaugh. Do not miss it. But first, the launch of Fox Nation is just weeks away. Here's a preview. If you're going to name Bork, then you're going to be in an epic ideological battle. Robert Bork's America is a land in which women would be forced into back alley abortions. He said, what the hell are you doing? Segregated lunch counters. He said, we got to get him. Midnight raids. I should have grabbed him by the lapels and say, you want to get confirmed? Shut up and listen. Well, you can look at the beard. It really was watching this giant versus the pygmies. Women fear you, the blacks as well. What happened has become a verb. To Bork. Those are the most unfair characterizations of my views. It means to destroy. If you're a woman who has a credible claim against a Democrat on the ballot this November, the message is crystal clear. Shut up, sister, and don't rock the boat. A prominent Democrat member of Congress with credible domestic abuse allegations is running for office this fall. So, the latest in our How Swampy Is Your Candidate series has a special twist. Democrats' hypocrisy on women's rights is tonight's Swamp Watch.
deputy chairman of the Democratic National Committee and Minnesota Congressman Keith Ellison is running to become Minnesota's Attorney General in November. Ellison's ex-girlfriend Karen Monaghan has accused him of violently assaulting her. This is a text message she sent him. Keith, we never discussed the video I have of you trying to drag me off the bed yelling the expletive out now, calling me an expletive and saying I hate you expletive. Monaghan has also released notes from a doctor's appointment stating Ellison's emotional and physical abuse. The document mentions Ellison by name. Someone recently tweeted at Ellison's accuser, Karen Monaghan, asking if Democrats believe her. She replied, no, they don't. I've been smeared, threatened, isolated from my own party. This isn't even the first such allegation against Ellison. In 2006, Amy Louise Alexander publicly accused Ellison of verbally abusing her while they were having an affair. She also said he grabbed and pushed her during an argument. Ellison denies both allegations. Just like Brett Kavanaugh denies the allegations made against him. Of course, Democrat leaders, because they have such a strong, principled commitment to women's rights, would insist that both cases are treated the same, right? On the Brett Kavanaugh allegations, the most vocal Democrat this week was Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. I believe her because she's telling the truth. She is asking the FBI to investigate her claims. She is asking for that kind of review, that investigative work, that oversight, that accountability, because she's telling the truth. Judge Kavanaugh has not asked to have the FBI review these claims. Is that the is that the reaction of an innocent person? It is not. And here's what she said about the Keith Ellison case. Literally nothing. What about that great champion of women's rights, Kamala Harris? On Brett Kavanaugh's accuser, she says this. I believe that there sh that the FBI, Nora, to your point, mm -hmm. is, is it should be compelled to do its job in terms of doing, the, completing their background investigation. And that's not being done. Be compelled, but it's okay. She's really fired up about Keith Ellison too. Quote, I know that the DNC is investigating it. So we'll see and let that run its course. The DNC investigating it. Imagine if Chuck Grassley said that about the Brett Kavanaugh case. Don't worry, we've got the RNC looking into it. But if we can't count on Kamala Harris for consistency, then surely good old Bernie Sanders is a reliable Me Too advocate. Yes, indeed. On Kavanaugh, he tweeted, the allegation from Professor Christine Blasey Ford is a serious one that deserves a full investigation. Strong words, Senator. And I'm sure you feel equally strongly about alleged abuse of any women anywhere. So what's this? When asked about the Ellison allegations, Senator Sanders told reporters, quote, nope, nothing. And you'll excuse me, I've got to get going. I'm sure you do, just in case you get a lecture from your colleague, Maisie Hirono. Guess who's perpetuating all of these kinds of ac actions? It's the men in this country, and I just want to say to the men in this country, just shut up and step up. Do the right thing. That's right, Maisie. These wretched men who don't respect women with abuse allegations need to shut up and step up. Men like, well, Democrat Senator Richard Blumenthal. He had lots to say this week about Brett Kavanaugh. I believe Dr. Ford, I believe the survivor here, there's every reason to believe her. This nomination will not only cast a shadow over Judge Kavanaugh, if he were ever to be confirmed, it will also stain the United States Supreme Court irreparably. But on Democrat Keith Ellison's alleged abuse, silence. Come on, Senator, step up. And that goes for you too, Tom Perez, chair of the DNC. Here's what Perez said about Brett Kavanaugh. This serious allegation must be investigated thoroughly. The American people deserve answers, not a vote that's rammed through by Republicans. I wonder what he means by a thorough investigation. Oh wait, he told us when he was talking about the serious allegations against Keith Ellison. I mean, the matter is under review, and, and uh, the Minnesota Democratic Party is conducting a very thorough investigation. Phew, that well-known and widely trusted professional arbiter of sexual abuse allegations, the Minnesota Democratic Party, is going to take care of it. Wait, I've had an idea. On Brett Kavanaugh, let's get the Maryland Republican Party to investigate. I'm sure Tom Perez will be fine with that. What a bunch of hacks and hypocrites these Democrats are. I took that message deep into hostile territory on Friday when I went on Bill Maher's show. 
She was making an argument that basically he is guilty and he can, until he can prove himself innocent. And that is not something I think that we should accept. No. And furthermore, there's a hypocrisy to it. I wouldn't mind that so much if the same standard was being applied to others in her party who have had serious no. allegations made against them, like Keith Ellison. But that's not happening. What happened. about Eric? Well, you can imagine how that went down. Isn't this country divided enough without Democrats politicizing one of the most long-standing and abhorrent issues in our society, the abuse of women by men? An issue that we're now, finally, thankfully, giving the priority it deserves. How can we unite against this vile behavior when it's me too if you accuse a Republican, but not you if you accuse a Democrat? Republican senators have shown respect to Dr. Ford. Can't even one, just one, prominent Democrat say, I believe her, when the alleged abuser is a leader of their own party. Kirsten Gillibrand, Kamala Harris, Maisie Hirono, you made a great show of standing up for women last week. Turns out that in your eyes, some women's rights are worth more than others. Thanks a lot, sisters. Tell us what you think of that on social media at NextRevFNC and at Steve Hilton X. Coming up, Mike Bloomberg for president in 2020. Really? We'll meet the man who knows next. If you're a woman who has a credible claim against a Democrat on the ballot this November, the message is crystal clear. Shut up, sister, and don't rock the boat. A prominent Democrat member of Congress with credible domestic abuse allegations is running for office this fall. So the latest in our How Swampy Is Your Candidate series has a special twist. Democrats' hypocrisy on women's rights is tonight's Swamp Watch. Deputy Chairman of the Democratic National Committee and Minnesota Congressman Keith Ellison is running to become Minnesota's Attorney General in November. Ellison's ex-girlfriend Karen Monaghan has accused him of violently assaulting her. This is a text message she sent him. Keith, we never discussed the video I have of you trying to drag me off the bed, yelling the expletive out now, calling me an expletive and saying I hate you, expletive. Monaghan has also released notes from a doctor's appointment stating Ellison's emotional and physical abuse. The document mentions Ellison by name. Someone recently tweeted at Ellison's accuser, Karen Monaghan, asking if Democrats believe her. She replied, no, they don't. I've been smeared, threatened, isolated from my own party. This isn't even the first such allegation against Ellison. In 2006, Amy Louise Alexander publicly accused Ellison of verbally abusing her while they were having an affair. She also said he grabbed and pushed her during an argument. Ellison denies both allegations. Just like Brett Kavanaugh denies the allegations made against him. Of course, Democrat leaders, because they have such a strong, principled commitment to women's rights, would insist that both cases are treated the same, right? On the Brett Kavanaugh allegations, the most vocal Democrat this week was Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. I believe her because she's telling the truth. She is asking the FBI to investigate her claims. She is asking for that kind of review, that investigative work, that oversight, that accountability, because she's telling the truth. Judge Kavanaugh has not asked to have the FBI review these claims. Is that the, is that the reaction of an innocent person? It is not. And here's what she said about the Keith Ellison case. Literally nothing. What about that great champion of women's rights, Kamala Harris? On Brett Kavanaugh's accuser, she says this. I believe that, there sh that the FBI, Nora, to your point, mm -hmm. is, is, it should f be compelled to do its job in terms of doing the, completing their background investigation. And that's not being done. Be compelled. But it's okay. She's really fired up about Keith Ellison, too. Quote, I know that the DNC is investigating it, so we'll see and let that run its course. The DNC investigating it. Imagine if Chuck Grassley said that about the Brett Kavanaugh case. Don't worry, we've got the RNC looking into it. But if we can't count on Kamala Harris for consistency, then surely good old Bernie Sanders is a reliable Me Too advocate. Yes, indeed, on Kavanaugh he tweeted, the allegation from Professor Christine Blasey Ford is a serious one that deserves a full investigation. Strong words, Senator. And I'm sure you feel equally strongly about alleged abuse of any women anywhere. So what's this? 
When asked about the Ellison allegation, Senator Sanders told reporters, quote, nope, nothing. And you'll excuse me, I've got to get going. I'm sure you do. Just in case you get a lecture from your colleague, Maisie Hirono. Guess who's perpetuating all of these kinds of ac actions? It's the men in this country. And I just want to say to the men in this country, just shut up and step up. Do the right thing. That's right, Maisie. These wretched men who don't respect women with abuse allegations need to shut up and step up. Men like, well, Democrat Senator Richard Blumenthal. He had lots to say this week about Brett Kavanaugh. I believe Dr. Ford. I believe the survivor here. There's every reason to believe her. This nomination will not only cast a shadow over Judge Kavanaugh if he were ever to be confirmed, it will also stain the United States Supreme Court irreparably. But on Democrat Keith Ellison's alleged abuse, silence. Come on, Senator, step up. And that goes for you too, Tom Perez, chair of the DNC. Here's what Perez said about Brett Kavanaugh. This serious allegation must be investigated thoroughly. The American people deserve answers, not a vote that's ran through by Republicans. I wonder what he means by a thorough investigation. Oh wait, he told us when he was talking about the serious allegations against Keith Ellison.